Today I want to talk about Earl Campbell and why he was wrong to talk about Sam Ellinger in this way. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up kid folk? It's RJ Young. I'm not on step mail considering the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Earl Campbell is out here saying some of the stupidest things this side of Kyler Murray should play wide receiver. The note in Kurt Bowles' column in the Austin American Statesman goes like this. Earl Campbell thinks he can fix the Longhorns. Texas' first Heisman Trophy winner told Bowles last week that he loves Sam Ellinger, but he has a requirement for future Longhorn quarterbacks. Earl said, quote, until the University of Texas realized, and nothing against Sam Ellinger, you got to have a talented black quarterback. All these schools that are winning, even in the pros, have black quarterbacks. When you got guys that are not open, something can still happen, end quote. Big Ol' Earl also told Bowles that Tua Tagovailoa, Vince Young, Jalen Hurts, Deshaun Watson, and JT Barrett all wanted to come to Texas. First of all, Earl, Tua ain't black, but that's neither here nor there. Earl also said he realized, really <laughs> admires Jalen Hurts and that they became close friends after the quarterback was a finalist for the Earl Campbell Award. Earl said Jalen reminds him of himself. Earl said he liked Jalen's calm. Earl said he thinks Nick Saban did all he could to kill Jalen's motivation. Earl said Jalen returns his text. Earl said Jalen is one of the most classy individuals he's ever seen play sports. Well, we know Earl ain't. Not in this moment. But Earl got this platform for being the best football player, not for being the best person. For the uninitiated, Earl Campbell showed up at Texas and immediately became the best running back walking the 40 acres. He averaged 5.8 yards per carry over his career, and he won the 1977 Heisman Trophy when he carried the Rock for 1,744 yards on 267 carries, 6.5 yards per pop, with 19 touchdowns. He was selected number one overall in the 1978 NFL Draft by the Houston Oilers, from there, the Tyler Rose kept right on tilling defenses. He led the league in rushing in his first three years in the NFL. In 1980, he rushed for 1,934 yards with 13 touchdowns on a workhorse load of 373 carries, all league highs. But that wasn't supposed to happen. Earl wasn't supposed to lead the league in rushing three years running. Earl wasn't even supposed to rush for all those yards and win the Heisman Trophy. Not at Texas, anyway. But Daryl K. Royal had decided winning was more important than the color of a man's skin. Took him too long to get there, though. Texas' varsity team didn't field any players with skin color like mine until 1970, 16 years after Brown v. Board of Education. The 1969 Longhorns that Texas honored with throwbacks and a 50-48 embarrassing win against Kansas, that was the last all-white college football team to win a national championship. And it took freshman tailbacks coach Ken Babs heading up to East Texas to recruit the best damn tailback anybody had ever seen this side of Adrian Peterson. During one stretch, Ken spent 17 nights in room 164 at the Ramada Inn paying a dozen dollars a night for the pleasure. He later told Asher Price in his book about Earl Campbell, Earl Campbell, Yards After Contact, that old DKR didn't want him to leave Tyler until he got big old Earl. Story goes, more than 250 recruiters showed up to watch Earl play his senior year at Tyler High. Asher Price reported Earl was offered a brand new shotgun stuffed with $100 bills, a suede coat, a car, and a job. Earl was a prize for all the white dudes that were vying for, well, all the black dudes after a small HBCU showed them up. 1968, the NFL drafted 11 players from Jackson State, Mississippi. 11 years later, after Texas, Alabama, and other schools finally integrated, the SWAC only had five players selected. Now, Sam Ellinger. That man has had a share of high-profile haters. And I'm not talking about a YouTuber who ain't on a step mill. 
Baker Mayfield went out of his way to say he wanted Ellinger to know he doesn't like him at his kids camp in Norman. Petty. Terry Bradshaw looked like he spent just a little too long in the Louisiana sun when he said he didn't believe the Longhorns were good enough to beat Big Bad Law Tech. Now, a 45-14 beating with a side of 208, or excuse me, 28 of 38 for 276 passing yards and four passing TDs put that stupidity to bed. And to know about Harji is to know all he did in high school was break Westlake records held by Drew Brees and Nick Foles, both of whom have infinity stones to show for winning the Super Bowl. He beat out a QB in Shane Bouchelle at Texas, who has turned around Southern Methodist and into one of the only undefeated teams left to start the month of November. Sam Ellinger led Texas to its first 10-win season in nearly a decade. He beat Jake Fromm in Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. He's 6'2", 230 pounds, and has all the tools Earl associates with black quarterbacks. I also think he's a hell of a kid. He's proven good enough to pass for 500 against number one LSU and beat a Heisman winner in the Red River rivalry. He can get your first down when the play breaks down, but that's not black. That's not white. That's modern day quarterback. Lamar Jackson and Baker Mayfield. That's Deshaun White and Alex Smith. And last I looked, Colt McCoy was a baller. He just ain't Vince Young. No one is though. But let's not pretend that UT quarterbacks Gerard Hurd and Tyrone Swoops are upgrades compared to Hard G, because that's asinine, but not to big ol' Earl. In 1965, the Associated Press falsely reported that at a meeting of coaches in Washington, D.C., Daryl Royal told a group of black coaches, quote, the black coach has not reached the point where his coaching is as scientific as it is in the major colleges. The story was false and quickly and furiously rebutted by DKR and UT Brass. Matter of fact, the AP printed a retraction. In a statement following the publishing of this article, Royal said, such thoughts are not in my heart and I could not have made those statements. Particularly because he was at a dinner in Austin where Lady Bird Johnson was being honored at the time the statements were supposedly uttered. And as he said, the whole thing is a vicious invention. Now, what hurts the most is Earl Campbell cannot claim such libel. Now, I'm bringing that up because Earl actually asked Royal during his recruitment, he didn't really ask, he said, I understand you don't like black people. For the sake of this piece, it doesn't matter that DKR refuted this off and on for the rest of his life, in large part due to the false reporting of the Associated Press. It only matters that Earl seems to have still held on to a belief I wrote a book debunking and remains totally unclear about how far we've come and how far we still have to go. Damn it, Earl. I live here. You're 64, twice my age. And here I am having to tell folks who you are because you have forgotten who you were and where you come from. With your personal history, how could you? And Jalen, next time this man ends up in your messages, please do us all a favor and leave this dude on red. Night, sit for me. Those.